Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough of The Captain is Dead! In this game, we're trying to repair our jump core all the way to engage before our ship is totally overrun by aliens, or our shields go down to zero, or we get to the red uh, alerts and they kill us. <laughs> Lots of different things that can happen uh, that could go bad. This is definitely a game where what you're trying to do is just manage the fires that are going on until you can get out and win the game. Now, I've never seen Star Trek, but I've heard a lot of references that this game is a lot like Star Trek. So if you're a Trekkie, I think you'll enjoy this playthrough. Just like normal, if you'd like to uh, see this, see the setup video, hang out here. Otherwise, check out the video below this for the playthrough, and I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, and Rado just recently did a playthrough of this as well. He doesn't do the whole thing, of course. He just does a little bit. But if you want to see what he does, feel free to check out his video. I'll put a link in my description below. The first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to grab all of these different uh, science upgrades cards. There's a front and a back. The front shows you the active abilities. You're just going to grab them. Put them down here as inactive upgrades, and if someone goes into the science lab, they can spend four science skill to upgrade. You can have up to two upgrades, and there's this trauma station over here. Yep, you can see that. This trauma station, you can also upgrade. So you can have a potential of three upgrades in the science station. Next you want to do is set up your alert deck. Now these alerts are how you're going to lose the game. If ever this deck completely empties, you've lost the game. But that won't ever happen because these alerts, these red alerts, are going to kill you first. <laughs> so there's level 3, level 2, level 1. You'll shuffle your level 3 ones individually, put the um, level 2 ones that you've shuffled on top of that, and the, one, uh, the yellow ones on top of it like so. So you'll go through the yellow alerts first, then the red, or uh, then the, what color is that? Orange, and then the red. And if somehow you survive through all the red, you still lose the game. You'll place the alert deck right here. And then you'll also set up on the board here the external sensors, which are online initially. Your comm system, which also is online initially. Your external sensor lets you reveal the top two yellow alerts, and we can look at those right away. That way you know what's coming. Here we have the two alerts that we know that are coming since we have the external uh, alerts uh, or external uh, scanners online. Our first one would reduce the shields by 10% and then turns the tor tor torpedo tube offline. Our second one adds three hostile aliens to the computer core. And I would say the biggest weakness of this game is the hostile aliens. They're kind of pathetic. Think of them more like pandemic cubes that could potentially hurt you. Um, they don't really fight back, they just kind of hang around and they prevent you from doing other things in those rooms. Um, you can also see on these alerts, you see these th three blue command uh, icons here, and then it says override. If during your turn you discard or use three command skills, you can cancel one of these, uh, the alert that's drawn. So that's one of the ways you can prevent some of those red alerts and maybe actually get to the end of the alert deck. But uh, that's not my plan. I'm planning to create that jump core and get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> but here's our two that we'll start with. Next, let's set up our skills. So we'll place the shuffled skill deck right here. We then have the computer card here, which is online. You can take one action when you're in the computer room to draw a skill. We also start with the internal sensors online. This allows us to draw and replenish the top three skills in this area right here, and we can always go here and draw a face-up skill. So we'll start with a command skill in there, a science skill in there, and ooh, another science skill. Oh, cool. So those are our three skills we have available to us when we're in the computer court. We can grab from here, or we can just draw from the top of our skill deck to see what other skills we can uh, uh, draw. When you play this game solo, they suggest you play with more than one character. I'm going to play with three. I kind of like three. It's harder than two, I think, and it's more enjoyable. You get more abilities and everything like that. So what we're going to do is we have to draw a total of five skill cards for each character. But we don't even know who the characters are yet. But based on how I read these setup rules, you're first supposed to draw the five skills, then you draw for characters. So. Let's draw five skills per character, and we don't even know who is going to be who yet. Here's the cards for player one, player two, player three. 
we now have to choose one card of each of these hands and we're gonna put them in the cargo pod. So I think I'm gonna grab this tactical one for this first one because he's got three engineering, and that's awesome. This guy's got a ton of engine or tactical, so let's leave that and do one engineering into the cargo pod. And then our third guy here, let's also have him put engineering. That way, whoever's gonna be our, our uh, jump core repair can get some engineering from the uh, cargo pod. Here's our cargo pod. We'll place those three skills that we all chose to put in there, plus we've got some tools available to us. If I use those tools, we'll look at those in detail, but we don't need to do that right now. But now you can go to the cargo pod and you can either take or exchange one skill or tool, which is really nice. Next, you wanna set up your captain's journal. So that normally takes you two actions and one command to be able to draw one battle plan. Now, what is about a battle plan? Well. It's these cards, and they're totally random, really helpful things. I mean, one could be to repair three um, three systems, or one could be, hey, give someone an engineering discount for the rest of the game. So these battle plans are awesome, but they're expensive. Two actions and a command. Uh, you have to have a command skill, which might mean you have to discard a command card to be able to do it. So that's just, it's hard to get these, but they're useful. Next, let's set up our torpedo tube. So we'll place our torpedo tube here, and we get five torpedoes that are available for our use. If you want to play at a harder level, I think uh, you just take some of these off and you have to build some, because you might also have to manufacture a torpedo if you don't have any here. There's two that will be off here that you can manufacture, but you'll use those to shoot some enemy units or enemy uh, ships. Next, you'll want to set up your shields to do that just plop this right here, we're at 100% and good to go. Don't forget, we have to set up our jump core. So depending on how hard we wanna play, if we were playing it insane, we'd start all the way down here and start with two less torpedoes. We'd have to repair the jump core all the way to engage. We're not doing that. We're playing on normal, because I think that's a good place to start. And we are trying, we'll have to repair the jump core one, two, three, four, five times. Now you might think, well, that doesn't sound like a ton. But if you look here, you need five engineering and two actions to repair this once. So that is a ton of engineering and a ton of actions to be able to get to this engage. Next, you'll just wanna get your 12 alien pawns ready and available. If ever there are all 12 on the board and you need to place another one, you lose the game. So like I said, they're kinda of like Pandemic. They don't outbreak or anything, but they are somewhat annoying. So how they suggest you pick uh, the specific role you're gonna be, you draw from the uh, pool of pawns, and whichever one you draw, that's the one that you're going to be, that color, and then you can look at all the roles within that one color, and that's what you're gonna be. So let's see, I'm gonna go, okay, let's see, I got a blue one, awesome. And then I have, oh, uh, orange one, I think, yep. And then let's see, I'll grab, Oh my goodness, this one? Yeah, cool, green. Our first player can choose between being the first officer or the admiral. Now in Rano's play, he plays the admiral, so I think I'm gonna do the first officer just so you guys can see something different. Each one has a special ability. They have the amount of actions they have um, uh, available to them. They have a ranking number, which tells us when they go. Uh, so since he's the first officer, he's the number one, he'll go first. Here shows how many skill cards they can have in their hand, and here shows their skill discounts. So if I do anything that costs any sort of command or tactical, I get one discount because I come with those skills to begin with. Our ability is pretty cool. Once per turn, you may draw a battle plan for one less action, or you may search the battle plan deck and retrieve a card by spending four command and two actions. <laughs> sweet. Our second player can choose between the teleport chief, teleporter chief, or the chief engineer. Once again, this is hilarious, but uh, <laughs> Rado used the chief engineer, so let's use the teleporter chief. Didn't mean to pick the same people he did. The teleporter chief will be number two, so he'll go second in the um, in, in turn order. He has four actions available to him, can hold six cards, and comes with one engineering skill as a discount. His ability is you may use the teleporter as a free action twice during each of your turns. Okay, Rado didn't play with any of these. So <laughs> third player can choose between the scholar, the science officer, and the cyborg. 
side Borg. I think I'm doing the science officer. The science officer is uh, number five in rank, so she'll go third. She has four actions available to her. She can hold six cards and has two signs as a discount. Her ability is, after anyone discards an anomaly, you may draw two random skills from the skill deck. Note, anomalies are lasting effects that come from the alert deck. Yeah, these anomalies are terrible. The other reason I wanted to play this with three characters is because anomalies come into effect. With only two players, anomalies don't come into effect, but I want to show you those since in Rado's playthrough, he doesn't do it. Here we have each of our players with their starting hand. So unfortunately, the first officer was the first player, and he got three engineering. I wish our teleporter chief got that. But there's going to be ways we can give cards to each other, which is really nice. The science officer do, does have two science in her hand, and with the two science here, she might be able to go to the science uh, lab and do some upgrades. Each player will start in their designated spots. So the uh, the teleport officer will start in engineering. He matches that color. The first officer will start in the war room over here. And then the science officer will start in the science lab. Now you think, okay, this shouldn't be too bad, right? Well, this is a co-op game. Managing issues that are going on all the time, things breaking down. Since our captain is dead, we've already had five alerts that are happening and have hurt the ship. So what we do is we're going to draw five alert cards right off the top of the uh, off the top of the deck. We're going to do them, and then we can start playing the game. Our first alert is add three hostile aliens to engineering. We've got three aliens now here with our teleporter chief. That's going to prevent a lot of things that he can do during his turn. Oh no, we've got an alien fighter ship. Whenever the shields take damage, increase that damage by 10%. All alien ships go over here, and the only way we can get rid of them is by using the torpedo tube. Oh boy, our teleporter is going to be offline. So we have to reduce the shields by 10%, which actually is 20% because of that alien ship, and the teleporter is hit. We have to flip the teleporter to the offline side. Now we can take an action and two engineering skills to be able to put that back online. And our shields go down to 80%. Oh no, the comm is offline. Reduce the shield by 20% again and comm systems are offline. Our shields are going down to 60% already. <laughs> And if you look here, it's going to take us two actions and two tactical to, to get that back up. Our comm system here is used to give a skill to another player anywhere on the board. So now we can't do that. We'll have to be in the same room until we get this comm system back online. Because all we're hearing right now is... This is probably what killed our captain. Direct hit. Reduce the shields by 20%. 20% plus that ship, 1, 2, 30% total. So we're at only 30% shields left. This is not looking good. And that, my friends, is the setup for the captain is dead. This is not looking good. <laughs> I will say I've only won this game once, but I just have a blast playing it no matter what. You just, you're just dealing with all these issues. You're just trying to fix what you can, and it is so much fun. I hope you guys are excited. Let's see if we can survive. Thanks for watching.